Hey! Hello! So, uh, uh, we're continuing with our Chicago theater trip. This is our last video for this trip. Yes, and we just saw uh, Endgame End at Steppenwolf Game. Theater by Samuel Beckett. Endgame uh, is a play, um, very, very simple to describe. Lindsay, just tell us in one sentence what the play is all about, what happens, and etc. Okay, well, we've got four characters in Endgame. Uh, Ham, who cannot stand. Uh, Clove, who cannot sit, and is uh, Ham's servant. And then we have Ham's parents, uh, neither of whom have uh, legs and live in barrels. And the outside world is pretty much a zero, very remin reminiscent of an, uh, an apocalyptic world, although Beckett strongly denied that this was the case. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't know that, but I thought it was a post-apocalyptic world. I know, that's what comes across, but apparently that was strongly denied. And, um, and so the, there is nothing outside the world, there is nothing to eat, um, there are no painkillers, there are no, um, there is, there is, it's a, it's a, described as a zero. The world is a zero, and it's pretty much like they are, uh, waiting to die. They're playing the end game. They're playing the end game, right? So, <laughs> we're, we're, I'll have to say, we're at a little bit of a, uh, a loss purposefully, because we both felt that the play, the play has something to say. It is an, uh, you know, it, it is a good play. We felt that the production that we saw at Steppenwolf was um, at the top of its class. Uh, very, you know, very accomplished actors doing a very accomplished job. You know, you probably couldn't see a better production. Um, but I didn't like the play. Did you like it? I don't know. See, I don't know if I like the play or not. But I'll tell you this. I can't stop, like, thinking about it. Every, every so often, another image pops into my mind uh, about the play. But it, it's, it's not a play you rush out and go, wow, that's great, you know, I can't wait to tell everyone to go see it. Um, and this brings <laughs> up a really interesting point, um, and something that you can use in the classroom, because I know that uh, in the curriculum, drama, our drama criticism is something that's part of the curriculum. So when you criticize a play, it's really important that you look at the uh, you look at the, as a whole, but also you look at the pieces. You can't yeah. just say, "I didn't like that play." No, snap, snap, snap. You have to go. Okay, what is it specifically that I don't like about the play? I think for me, um, I didn't like I, I I didn't like that there was that they were waiting for death and that there there was nothing there was nothing that was going to save them. I think in waiting for Godot, um, in my mind. Um, rightly or wrongly, I think that the two characters are waiting for something, someone to save them. And that made su such a big difference. To have characters waiting to die is, is you know, it's not my idea of um, how I want to spend an hour and a half. But it was one of those, I think it was one of those things where if you go down the line, uh, writing, 9 out of 10, acting, 10 out of 10, directing, 10 out of 10, overall experience, 4. So What, is that, what, does, <laughs> what does that say? What does that say? Um, so, and then the other thing to bring up is, uh, I have to say that excellent performance, the audience did not enjoy this play. Now, and we were at a very, we, we were at a matinee. We were at a matinee, and by and large, the age of the uh, theater goers was, um, over 60. We were pretty much the youngest people in we there. We were the youngest people there, so that begs another question. Oh, and, I'm oh. sorry, I have to interrupt, because we had one of those awesome theater experiences where oh, you're boy. going you're going to see Endgame and you're sitting down waiting for the show to start, and then like a group of like six old ladies comes and sits behind Stereotypical. you. Stereotypical. And then they, <laughs> a few minutes before a curtain, they, they pull out their program and they go, hmm, let's see what this is about. And you think, oh my goodness, we're in for a good ride here. Not only that, and then in the next two seconds, uh, uh, the one woman is looking through the program and she says, oh, I think we're going to be depressed. <laughs> but we're going to go out and have a nice dinner afterwards. And it's like, hmm. Okay, so we so didn't go out for a nice dinner afterwards, but we did go out for a, a pint of beer. We did, because it was that kind of experience. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Wait, okay, oh. so it also comes to this point. Um, theater, when choosing challenging plays, is this uh, is Beckett still ripe for this time? Uh, is it still relevant? Um, should theater companies be um, doing this kind of uh, work where a, a, a portion of their audience really doesn't enjoy it? And... Uh, on the other note, should audiences be more open? Should they be open for that challenging experience? Should theaters um, 
have more uh, thought about their audiences when they choose this step. And so think about the plays that you are choosing. Who are you choosing them for? Are you choosing them for your students? Are you choosing them because judges will like them? Are you choosing them because you know that some of your students may not like it, but you want to challenge them anyway? Um, it's a, it is an excellent point of discussion. I mean, as Craig and I, as we said, we haven't stopped really talking about this, this notion, you know, is, is it theater like, you know, a I think, job I think, of medicine or? I think theater companies uh, should challenge their audience. Nothing's more disappointing than a theater company that looks like it's pandering to their audience. Uh, and I think that no company is more positioned to push an audience than than Steppenwolf, which, which I, well, I found really strange to see the audience that they uh, attracted there. Uh, okay. That's, wraps up <laughs> that's it. Um, I, I, I really excellent. Again, we've had nothing but very interesting theatrical experiences here in Chicago, and uh, we can't wait to come back.